Every game matters, my man. That's 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 the mantra, and there's no other competition that makes it like this. It's like crazy. this is, it's stressful. It's stressful. <laughs> like, I'm, what are you doing? You just waiting for the ball to get there? You standing around on defense? For me, like, don't give me the ball. I'm gonna find the ball off the rim. I'll go get it. That's how I've always been. And then the game against Fenerbahce at home, I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna smile at all. And I was terrible. <laughs> We ended up winning, but I was horrible. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time, the crossover with Joe R. Lucas. It's been on fire this season. Nigel Hayes Davis, Kemba Walker, James Nunnally is coming to you soon. And now it's time, let's just take it up a notch. Why not? Listen up, my peeps. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Tima Moneke. My man. I'm so happy to have you, dude. You just you have no you have no idea how happy I am for you to be here. Honestly, it, it means a lot because I've been watching and listening to your show for years, and it feels it makes me feel like I'm doing something right that I'm here. So I appreciate that, man. It, this is the quickest turnover I've ever had from like sitting having a, like that courtside conversation pregame back on January 3rd when y'all made that big comeback against Pan of the Nikes and actually getting you on the show. So. I, Personally, I have to thank you for making it happen because it's you guys that ultimately make this happen for us. I know we have to go through our channels, but we get it, we get it going, and, and I'm just happy that you're here, man. I'm, I'm like I said before, I'm, I'm definitely glad to be here, and yeah, it's been a long time coming. And hey, do I need to apologize about bringing up James Nunnally's name in in, in the intro or not? <laughs> not at all. You know, that's that's a that's a guy that I have mutual friends with. My um. One of my favorite people, my favorite coaches from UC Davis, John Omesker Jones, he used to coach him. And actually after that game, you know, he started a group chat because we're, you know, two of his favorite players. And, you know, it was, it was, it what, was what a good ha- What happened? I, I didn't, I, I've heard it, but I never really saw it. What happened? Uh, just, you know, I, I think I was five for seven from the free throw line or three for five from the free throw line. Before that moment, I got an offensive rebound and, you know, I have two shots to make make us win the game we're down one and you know they were reviewing something so Zach Day and James Nunnally they came over and they just you know try to get in my head and I embraced the moment and I I enjoyed it and you right. know I I came out on top that time I, I mean I think that I think the game's missing some of that man I really I really do I mean I remember when I was playing, like, I, I used to love, like, sitting at the foul line and, like, taking the ball off the rim, you know, because there was something you could do in Europe when that ball hits the rim. So I'd go by the guy shooting the foul, so I'm like, don't, don't, don't shoot it short now. If that ball touches the rim, I'm getting it. <laughs> See, <laughs> you know? that, I, I completely agree with you. That's, it's gamesmanship. To me, that's, yeah. that's, re, that's respect. Like, it's not, I don't, they didn't say anything disrespectful. They didn't do anything that was out of line. I, 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 I appreciate that kind of, Right. Those kinds of things, because I think it makes the sport more entertaining. And, it, you know, I, I'm sure the next time we play, it's going to make the game even more interesting to fans as well. Yeah, and, and, and that situation might get turned around on them. <laughs> you walk by and do the same thing. Well, I love exactly. it. I, I think the words you use perfectly is games, gamesmanship. That's what, that's what it is. It's what it's all about, man. But I need, I need you to know the deal, though, man, because I almost canceled this interview on you. Wow! Because I go up the, I do up the Basconi and do the game, right? And I, you know, I, I come up to you, I ask you to ball out because for us guys that, that do the game, we we want to see, you know, we want to see something spectacular, you know. And what you did, which was great for me, I said. But on the way home, my wife, my wife's in the passenger seat, right? We're driving. She's like, she's like, hey man, she's like, you know, I got a new boyfriend. I said, who? She said that team of guy. Wow. I said, what? I said, wait a minute. I said, I said, hold on. I said, hold on a second. Yo, we got this little thing, you know, where I got my girl, she got her boy. I right, said, wait right. a minute. I said, I said, what happened to Snoop Dogg? Oh, Cause that, wow. Because that was her boyfriend Snoop. before. She's like, no, nah, no, nah, I broke, I broke up with him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Snoop versus me, I, it makes a lot of sense. So, um, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you know the, but you know the problem for me is like Snoop, Snoop's like in L.A. and Miami. I ain't gotta worry about him. I got like she ain't coming to no more games. I can tell you right. that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, I'm a good guy. I'm gonna stay away from that. Um, but shout out to my my, my new girlfriend too. <laughs> I don't even know her name, but it's my new girlfriend. Yeah, there you go. Her name's Ava, by the way. 
I said, it's the first time she's made my podcast. That's amazing. That's a good story. Hey, man, let, let's, let's, jump, let's jump in a little bit about your life, man. It's crazy, dude. You, 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 the, your whole story is just, just it's, it's almost un, not even comprehensible, you know? At Nigeria, you're born in the capital city. Your dad is from Sydney. Or your mother was from Sydney, right? My parents are both. My parents are both Nigerian. My dad is Nigerian. Is Sydney, yeah. And, and like you spent because it was a diplomatic type family. I mean, you you've been traveling all over the place. You spent time without even seeing your parents. Absolutely, it, yes. Um, I went from 2009 to 2022 without seeing my dad. Thirteen years. Thirteen years, and I went from 2009 to 2018 without seeing my mom. And, 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 like, who, and who were you with all that time? So from 09 to 2013, I moved back to Australia and all of the kids were there while my parents were finishing up in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was living with my oldest brother at the time for four years. And then I got a scholarship to go to um, junior college in Nebraska. So from 2013 to 2017, I didn't see anyone in my family. I was just out there by myself and, you know, it builds character. Dude, that's crazy, man. That's, you know, because, you know, in, in our game, in our sport, you hear so many stories, and a lot of sports, you hear so, so many stories about, you know, people that have good families, they were brought up without a parent, you know, or, or you know, whatever. I mean, I did the Bobby Dixon story, and, and like, it, it wasn't a bad situation. It just wasn't, you know what I mean? It's like, you see some situations where they're bad situations. Yours wasn't a bad situation. It was just that like you were just separated from your folks, and, and man, that, that it does build character, but it's got to be difficult also. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess just my life growing up was never normal, but I didn't understand right. how unnormal it was until I got to Nebraska at 17. And I realized that, you know, the traveling that I did is just, you know, most people don't get to do that. Right. And um, obviously there's a lot of good things that come with that, you know, learning about other cultures, being smarter, being a better human. And then the bad side of it is, you know, you make friends and then you leave them. And then in my case yeah. is because basketball also became a dream and a goal of mine. Like I chased that knowing that I'm going to spend time away from my family. And, you know, yeah, definitely tough. It's still tough to this day. You know, there's sometimes I don't see my family, but because I have money now and, you know, I can fly them out here and, mm -hmm. you know, see them, see them multiple times a year. So, I think that's what I that's what I do for all the hard times or the hard times in my life are past me now. And um, a lot of the things that I work for, you know, I've, I've achieved them. That's awesome, man. I mean, it's just your whole story is really cool. We can get into all. But but what, what would have happened if, if you would have went the soccer route? Because oh, I mean, were you, I mean, you think you were good enough? Oh, my goodness. I was oof. I would be I would be a star. A thousand percent. I know that for a fact. Um, first of all, just, first of all, I, you can't run a banana soccer field with that dude, right? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'd have Listen, to get that. You know, those soccer players got that. It's kind of like mine. You know, they got it shaved tight on the yeah, side, you know? But I'm a trendsetter, though. You know, we don't follow rules. You. We, we, we make stuff happen over here, you know? Edgar, Edgar Davis with the goggles. That's who I would have been. But for me, like, <laughs> soccer was my first love for sure. And, um, you know, if I wasn't 6'5 and a half, then. I would thousand percent be a soccer player at a, at a big team somewhere. Nice, nice. I I always see that. I think I think it's when we do the on the TV we do like the profile of players, and I think it's Jana Musa who said if he wasn't a, a basketball player, he'd be a soccer player. I was like, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I keep I keep I keep my comments to myself on that one. I'll be. I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> So, so like, how was it, like, when you started playing basketball? Like, I mean, I'm looking somewhere along the line, like, where was your break? You know what I mean? I know they say you played with Dante Exum in, in college. And I'm assuming I was in Australia, obviously. Yeah. Um, and you got noticed there, you know, in the game. And But, I mean, when do you feel like your, your the break was? Was it going in Nebraska? Because Nebraska is not really a break now. I'm, 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 I mean, between you and I, we – <laughs> I mean, I, I think it, it depends on how you look at it. You know, the first break was me getting that scholarship to get to America because right. before, before I got that, I was, 
emailing schools. Like I still have YouTube videos of me when I was horrible. And you know, I, 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 I had those clips and you know, that's what I was hoping would get me a scholarship. And I emailed them to hundreds of schools and over a probably three to six month period, I got two responses from teams and they weren't even interested. It was just, you know, like a, we see you keep working type of thing. And, you know, I almost, it was like, all right, well, maybe this is not for me, but I didn't know how to stop. And then my senior year of high school, you know, in Australia, we call it college, but it was high school. Right. Playing with Dante. Dante was, at the time, he was supposed to be going to college. He was, you know, going to go to Indiana, but this was before he became an NBA guy. But at that time, he was still the, you know, the hottest junior, hottest player coming out of Australia. So everyone was watching him. Some guy happened to see me. He, Trevor Burnett, shout out to him. He was the old assistant coach at that junior college, moved back to Australia. And, um, you know, he still lives there. And he saw me, he gave me a chance. That's the first break. Right. And then if you're, t if you're talking about get into the, I would say the next stage is going to the tournament. Representing. You, play, you played three, you played two or three years at Juco. Two years of Juco, redshirted at Davis, and then played what, two that, years. That's what I couldn't understand. Why did you redshirt coming from a I, junior college? I'm not sure either. I'm not sure either. That was not that was not in the plans, but it worked out perfectly. But uh, when I went, for, when for, I went to, uh, let, let me explain for anybody who doesn't know. Usually back in the day when you transferred colleges, you had to sit out a season, which never ever made any sense to me. And I could go back far enough to tell you that it, back in my day, if you transferred within the same conference, you had to sit out two years. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, yeah. That's nasty. And uh, I mean, you know, I mean, when you're looking to make a living out of this, that's that's two years of money making time, you know, yeah, that's that's a big setback. So I came out of junior college, did two years there. And, um, you know, redshirting was never talked about when I committed to Davis, mm -hmm. but it ended up working out where that season they weren't that good. And the best player was a senior. He was at my position. So I wouldn't have played as much as I knew I should have. And um, it took me a couple months to really embrace it. But right. I think by like December or January of that redshirt season, I embraced it. And I was, you know, I was just the best player then. During that season, I made sure that I would be ready, you know, for my redshirt junior season. And then that next season was when we went to the tournament. First and only time in school history. You know, hey, man, that's a, I, I always find something to be jealous about with you guys about, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I, obviously, I'm always jealous that you guys are playing. I'm not, you know, <laughs> but but like when I see because I was at Niagara University, small school also, man. And like it was my dream to go to that damn dance and we never made it because I had I don't know. If, I don't even you know if you remember Reggie Lewis. Reggie Lewis of played course. with the Celtics. Yeah. Reg, Reg was like the number one player in the league. I was the number two player in the league the whole time. And man, that bastard—he kept me out of that. He, he kept you. me out of that dance every year, man. Four, we four were, years. Four years, and we were boys too. You know, we we became Damn, boys Reggie. after the third year. Damn, Reggie. So uh, <laughs> speak, speaking of Reggie's, um, yeah, that year in March Madness, Reggie Miller was one of the guys calling my games, and he said that I was a special player, and you know, look out for this guy. So like, I would say that was my second biggest break, and you know, March Madness was like my goal up until that point. Right. And then, you know, there's other things that I could consider breaks, but I would say the third major one was Manresa. You right. know, just, I, I think that's, that put me, that put me on the map. That's over your left shoulder right there. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, in, in case people don't know. Um, well, well, I got, I got that coming. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that I, was I, my, I, my next break. And I think those are the three that I would, I would definitely say. But before all that, you you know, once you got you, once you started to get established, let's say you went to France and you played what, what's called Pro B, right? Yes. Second division. And I mean, you, a lot of your story is is somewhat similar to mine, where I was cut from Sacramento. You know, like I was cut the day before the, the 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 guaranteed date, which back then it was December fourteenth. It was fifteenth was the date. I got cut on the fourteenth. I went to Italy. I was balling out. They cut me before the playoffs because they wanted somebody taller than me. Mm. Then I went to Malaga, and you know I almost got cut three times in the first two months. You know, and I and I'm thinking the same thing that I saw you say, like, man, I just got cut from the NBA. I got cut from Italy. I got cut from Spain. Who's gonna? <laughs> He's like, I I'm just like somebody's trash right now. You know, like where right. am I gonna get my break from? 
Right. You you've been doing the same thing. Even in Pro B, I mean, you you had a tough time. That was my first experience of professional basketball in Pro B. Right. I got cut, you know, three games into the regular season, and this was. I was a 22 year old kid that had friends in the NBA, and ultimately, I I knew that I could play in the NBA. But I'm think, you know, when I got cut, I'm like, how can I play in the NBA if I'm getting cut in Pro B? Right. So you know, there were, there were times where I questioned myself, and it it just didn't seem realistic to other people. I think a, a lot of a lot of my life has been unrealistic to a lot of other people, but. <laughs> For some reason, I, I just kept believing. I said, okay, well, maybe it's just a year later, or a year, or it's, I need to take a different route than I probably expected or wanted. But, you know, I kept persevering and eventually I got to where I, I knew I would always get what, to. What, one of my big questions that I've come up with in my mind through, through researching you and, and watching you is, is what, what do you think it was that that kept that perseverance going? What What do you think it was like every time you got knocked down? Because it, it doesn't seem like, even though you talk about it a lot, it doesn't seem like you're the type of person because you feel you're like deep down you sound you look and seem like a sensitive person. So, I think it affects you at first. So you don't just like pop up and just like, all right, man, I'm coming right back. No so way. I think. I think there's like you go. You it seems like you go through that stage where you like really really doubt yourself. But what is it that makes you come back? I mean, is there anything in particular that you could talk about other than the desire or, or you know, because people ask me that because, and I've always been like, I really don't know. I don't know what made me just keep going. I know that I just wanted to prove people wrong. That was about it. That's all I had going for me. See, so I would say probably the biggest answer is just how I was raised and the way I grew up. Um, Nigerians are very... We're very stubborn, but we're very smart. We're very passionate about what we believe in. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's a lot of Nigerians that, you know, you, you get out of Nigeria and they end up being successful in whatever field that they're in, whether it's boxing, engineering, being a doctor, UFC fighters, basketball players. We're, we're just musicians. We're everywhere. Um, but I just think when I, set, when I set my mind to something, I don't really care how it happens. I just know that that's ultimately what I wanted to do. And all the times where I questioned myself as a player, you know, it didn't change the fact that I didn't have a plan B. You know, right. it, I, I had a plan A the whole time. And a lot of people say, you're crazy. You have to have a plan B. What if plan A doesn't work out? No such thing. For me, at <laughs> least. For me, yeah. at least. And I think if I had a plan B, whenever it got hard, like the times when schools weren't responding to my, my emails, yeah. I would have I been like, okay, maybe, maybe they're all right. Let me go to plan B now. It I makes never it, had that. It, it definitely makes it easier to quit. You know, people that come from, you know, a lot of money, you know, there's, you know, I, I don't know if you know any NFL any NFL stuff, Andrew Luck, who mm -hmm. everybody talked yeah, about, you know, yeah. he came from a, a wealthy family of doctors and everything else, and they're, they're like, he's bound to quit someday, you yeah. know, and, and yeah. things go bad. But, hey, but you, had, I mean, you came back in France and had a good season, you know, in, in, 1920, in, in 2020. You know, yeah, sixteen points a game, almost seven boards, a couple of assists, and, and then, and then just, just as you know, I mean, of course, everybody's got their own story, but COVID hits, and like, <laughs> it's yeah, just like it's, another roadblock for you. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was just like my the my story was, I get knocked down, I persevere, I get to a new level, then I get knocked down, nice. and it's literally been like that since Australia, then JUCO, and then Davis. Australia, like I was, I got cut from a team that I should have made, um, and then the coach said that you know I wasn't, I couldn't think the game at that level. I was just athletic, which is like the first moment where I was like, oh wow, someone put something in me through words that like I don't like, and I'm gonna prove this person wrong. Right. And um, right. then I got to JUCO, and my my freshman year of JUCO was very up and down. We weren't that good. Then we fi I finally go crazy my second year. I get to Division One. I, I redshirt. Didn't think that was in the plans. I get to professional basketball, second division, not first, and I get cut. And then I have to spend the rest of that season and then another season in second division. Then the sec my second year that you were talking about, you know, we went undefeated at home, and that was a team that hadn't made the playoffs since 2006, 2007. So, you know, I, I prided myself on, you know, playing on teams that, 
weren't ever looked at as superior or favorites or anything like that. And then just exceeding expectations. And yeah, I think Monaco was the only team that I've played on that was supposed to be good. Well, th let me go back to what the, that coach said. I, I, I think it was in Australia where he said that you yes. didn't understand the game well enough because that that questions your basketball IQ, which is which is something that you know you could have as much talent as you want in this world, but you're not going to be a professional. You're not going to be a good professional player unless you have basketball IQ. Did you take that as a as a <clears throat> a slap in the face? Did you did you take it as like? You know what? Maybe he's right. Maybe I maybe I need to learn the game a little bit better. What what was I mean? What was your feeling about that? I was angry. I was <laughs> well. Of course. I, I mean, I I mean, anger is <laughs> anger is always going to be the first feeling. But the, but, but the, is it something that you you built from that that you took from and like you know what? Maybe he's maybe he does have a point. I mean, I think I think that's the first like whenever I go back, that's the first time that I remember. Okay. I'm going to prove him wrong. And that was just because I should have been on that team. And, yeah, obviously, if I looked at my tape, my highlights, or how I was as a player, then there was probably things I'd be like, damn, I did that. But at that level and, and at that time, I belonged on that team. And, obviously, right. I was 15. I started playing basketball at 13. So, of course, I could get better. Everyone, yeah. everyone could get better, but... For that level, I should have been starting on that team, and I was the last person to get cut. And then what he said was like, yeah, there was a little bit of, you know, yeah, I, I don't know why he said it. We're not going to get into that exactly. But I just remember it bothered me, and on, on the car ride home, you know, a friend that made the team, you know, he took me home. He couldn't believe that I didn't make the team, and I was, like, in shock. I didn't want to cry in front of him, but then I got home, and I was just devastated. And it was like, I turned into a villain in my head. And I started, the, like, all the trash talking and, like, the anger and the complaining. All of that came out because it, was, it just felt like everyone was against me at that time when I was in Australia. Just because I would tell people, I'm going to play in America. I'm going to play in college. I'm going to be a professor. And they literally, they laughed at me. They said, oh, Chima's crazy. <laughs> Chima. Like, genuinely. Like, so it, I became a very angry basketball player for those two remaining years before I got the scholarship. Like I was just, I would block a shot and I would like taunt extra. I would get technical fouls every game. Like it was, it was just, yeah, I had so much built in me because of that comment that I just wanted to prove people wrong so much. And yeah, it's the truth. And, and, and then Mandresa comes. How, how, how do you get to Mandresa? So um, COVID, after the COVID year, I go to Orleans, my first, you know, first division France. My first first division experience, it was in first division France. And at that point, if you're playing in a respectable first division country, other teams would be watching. Yeah. Um, I, I hadn't played European competition at that point. And I just knew that after this, I needed to go to, um, you know, a Champions League or a Euro Cup team, whatever it would be. That summer after Orleans, I ended up playing for Team Nigeria. And we right. beat the U.S. in Vegas. This is 2021. Yeah, crazy, crazy time. And at that time, I was I had a really good year, and I had a lot of interest from a lot of teams in other countries. We knew it was time to leave France, and um, it came down to I think it was Manresa versus Mercia, but my and no and Barcelona as well. Um, my agent said that Manresa, the coach, is the best coach in Spain, and he will get the most out of me. It won't be easy. Practices are tough. Who, who was the coach at that time? Pedro Martinez, still the coach. Oh, now. yeah, I love Pedro. You know, you know he's, Pedro. He's so great. he's incredible. You know, he's just a thousand games in um, ACB. But yeah, you know, he's he's coached at Basconia a couple times. Yes, he has in Valencia. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, so yeah, we had to make a decision. But when my agent, who I trust with my basketball career, told me that he believed that this is the place for me, like there was nothing really else to think about. Obviously, I talked to a few other people that had played there and knows Pedro and things like that. And, yeah, it was just a no-brainer. And it ended up being, yeah, my favorite and the most special basketball season of my of my life. I see I see you there behind you. <laughs> Crazy. We just, we just, 
we just went back there and it was very emotional this past week in the ACB League. So. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Crazy times. But and it, it, we, we started off struggling, you know, and a lot of people just no one really expected too much from us. All the the imports was the first. It was our first year playing in the ACB. So they thought we would struggle. And, and we did at first, but then we ended up having a magical season going to the finals and Champions League. I was the MVP. I was ACB first team. I think after 28 games, we were third behind Barca and Madrid. And then three of our point guards got hurt. And then we ended up sliding. But it was a crazy season. You know, you know, I've been out here long enough to know, but you don't need to be out here long enough to know that Manres ain't supposed to win no championships. No, 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 I, <laughs> you know? for sure. For sure, I've, I've heard all the stories. And, and they've I, done it I, before. I mean, they did it back in the day when I was playing too with with, with uh, T.T. Cruz and, and all those guys, the old guys. You know, yeah. you know, you know, George Gervin played for that team, right? Of course, of course. I know my, I know my man Rest of History. You know you your know, man Rest of History, huh? Saved save them from relegation, was averaging over 25. Yeah. I, I definitely know that. It's I played. Crazy. I played against the Ice Man a couple of times when he was here, Jeez. man. It was, that's, that's how old. That's how old I am, brother. Listen, you look good, my man. You <laughs> look trying. good. Right, I'm, trying, I'm trying to keep my weight from running the Baskonies, but I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Hey, I'm gonna lock my door. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So, so in Mandresa, you run in. I mean, you you had already known Coach Brown, Mike Brown, from the Nigerian team, right? Yes. And and yes. then you you you. Play good in Madresa, and and he throws some interest at you when he's with the Kings, and and how how's that all come about, man? Because that because now your dreams coming true, you know. What I mean? So so in in Madresa, Mike Brown was still with Golden State, so we didn't really have too much of communication during that season. I just knew from my agents that um, NBA teams were were interested, and a couple of NBA teams, you know, were at the games and. It was just, I think from like January, we beat Barcelona and Barcelona. And then things just started to get more serious. And, you know, I think a few months later, my agent was like sure that I would sign somewhere in the NBA without having to play summer league. And, you know, Sacramento was one of the teams interested. And then I, it was the day of the Champions League final. Never forget it. I woke up to a missed call from Mike Brown. Hadn't heard from him since like, you know, probably eight months before that. Right. And, you know, I called him back and he told me that, you know, unofficially off the record, he's going to be the next head coach of the Kings. And right. he would love to have me there. And I, I couldn't believe it. I was half asleep. So I was like, is this even happening right now? Is this a dream? <laughs> and, and, you know, fast forward, like the next day he was announced as the head coach. And, um, you know, I finished the season and Sacramento and a couple other teams sent their offers and, Based on what we knew at the time, we thought it would be best to go to Sacramento. And and I mean, what'd you get from that? I mean, I know it wasn't it wasn't what you expected. It obviously, wasn't what you wanted. Um, what'd you get out of it? What's the positives that you took from it? That, that's uh, a lot of a lot of great friends, a lot of great teammates, um, a lot of great connections that I still have to this day. Um, I didn't. I'm not a victim, you know. I I wasn't sad for myself because. For 13 year old Chima, like I played in the NBA, I achieved my dream. And not everyone is put on this earth to be an NBA superstar. Like I was, you know, I, some people get into college is, is more impressive than someone who was born with a basketball, with who has an NBA dad and gets to the NBA. So you can't compare everyone's situation. Like for my situation, I shouldn't have even made it to college. So for me to get to the NBA, was amazing. Obviously, it wasn't what I wanted, but I don't live life with regrets. I said, maybe this is what I needed for this moment. And if I get a chance to go back, I'll, I'll know what I need to do. And I'll know the situations that I need to be in for me to have a chance to succeed. And that's what I took it as. You know, I still have great relationships with, some, with a, a good amount of people over there. Players, staff, you know, physios, front office people. And I think that's what life is about, honestly. It's I took I took the good out of a lot of those things and I'm not a victim at all. But if I get a chance to go back to the NBA, then you know, I'll I'll do things the right way. No, you right. I mean you there's a learning process too, you know. But I I like the 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 thing about regret, you know, I think 
I think the only, like I look back on decisions that I made and I regret some of the decisions that I made, but I don't regret the reason why I made them. You know what I mean? Okay. It's, it's a big, it's a big difference because when you make a decision in life or, or, or whatever happens to you happens, it's, you have to make the best out of that. The only way you regret it is if you sit back and, and say, and, and like you said, play the victim yeah. and like some, someone's like, you know, they hurt me or they did this to me or they didn't give me my chance. Like, you know, you gotta go out and get your chance, man. Otherwise, you're gonna. You, otherwise, you're gonna regret. You're gonna live with that regret. You know. Thousand percent. If you if you make a decision, and you're fifty fifty with something else, and as soon as you make that decision, you stop. You know, yep. doing the things that you should have done while you made that decision, and that's when it becomes <coughs> a mistake, and that's when you no. just you made the wrong decision. So no. well, once you make that decision, you have to go hundred percent into that decision. And that's, that's the bottom line. But Simple. so you get, you get cut by the Kings. Um, the you made a little bit day, of money though. You made a little bit of day, cash. The day before the guaranteed date, like you. <laughs> so we get it <laughs> on I, the way, I, on the way to a Stockton Kings G league game on the phone. Never forget it. Pulled I see, over I see, my hand I see, you, I see you representing Stockton right there. Yeah, I mean, I, this was just this just happened to be what I was wearing today, but um, I still got love for both of the organizations, um, and yeah, I still got friends there, and I honestly I watch their games more than anyone else's because I you know I care about the people there, and that's how I am. So, you, you know, my you you were driving, you were on your way driving. I had come back from, I had come back home from playing against the Hawks. We played against Atlanta, yeah. and it was December fourteenth. And and I had a story where we had a couple other rookies on the team where the, the vets were telling me because we were terrible. We only won. I think the team won like nine games that whole year, or whatever. Damn. And the vets were telling me, dude, you need to go down, like twist your ankle, hurt your back, get on the IR, you know. So you don't, you know. I'm like, man, hell, I'm like hell with that. I said either either they want me or they don't. You know what I mean? So like two days later, the point guard that I was boys with, who was a rookie, all of a sudden, man, he goes to the lane, goes up the basket, comes down on his foot. He's like screaming, ah. I broke my foot. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm like, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. So the next day we play the Hawks and I go home, man. It's like nine o'clock at night after the game and I ain't been cut yet. I'm like, man, this is great. All of a sudden at like 11 something at night, my phone rings and you know who my coach was? My coach was Bill Russell. Mm. And so I'm literally sitting on the bathroom with a magazine in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and and my girl comes in and she's like, "You got a phone call." I'm like, "No, I'm not here." Uh, she's, like, she's like, "I already told him you were here." <laughs> I was like, "Damn, man, it's uh, an hour away." <laughs> yeah, I almost made it. God damn it! And, yes. and he got me yes. out of the bathroom too. But yes, yes. Uh, it's crazy, man. It's a, you know, I always when I do my my motivational speak, I always talk about the fact that you know we all dream about you know getting the NBA, but. Our, you know, in our dreams, you never, you, you never realize it. You might get cut. You might spend, you know, your eight teams in, in two years, move from here to here. You know, those dreams, when they dreams become reality, sometimes they're not as sweet as they were when you were See, sleeping. I think it's because we wake up after we get to the NBA. We don't understand that there was a whole nother dream of when we got to the NBA and then all yep. those other things happen. But, yeah, you know, it, 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 it doesn't take away from the fact that you and I are one of, what, 5,000 people ever yeah. to play in the NBA. Yeah. I mean, that, Amazing. That, that's what I, that's what I take from it. I was in the same position with you. I wasn't as far away as you were, but I had no chance to make the NBA when I when I was playing college ball. I was like, that ain't gonna happen. I got I got spotted in one game because I balled out against what you know, a future number one draft pick. And then all of a sudden my name got on the radar and, and I was just lucky. But let's get back to you man. We go to Monaco. Now you go to Monaco. I mean Mike James is my boy now. I, he, he, like Mike James to me is like number one. Now nah, he's he's up there number one with Shane Larkin. Those are like my two guys. Okay, okay, okay. And 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 I interviewed. I did Mike on a crossover, man. And and I think Mike is in a different way than you is misunderstood by so many people that don't actually get to know Mike. Cause Mike's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And, and, and Mike's probably the, the most research I did on a player in this, in this um, podcast, in the crossover, because I called his ex-teammates. I called Toko, I called Fabian Corsair, I called a bunch of different people. I was like, I need to know what this guy's about. You know, and nobody, nobody had one bad word to say about Mike. And Mike's got like that bad rep, you know what I mean? 
And, and I thought we cleared it up on the crossover, but but I love that guy, man. But what was he yeah. like as a teammate? Uh, I mean, honestly, we started off, you know, not on the same page. Just because Mike, he's like, he doesn't trust everybody. And he needs right. to like, he needs to see who you are and how you behave in certain situations. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we didn't get off to the best start in terms of just everything. And, you know, we had an incident, I think it was against Panathinaikos, I think, where, you know, I tried to calm him down and he pushed me and, you know, that was like the lowest point. And then he came back from a suspension and then we just became like really good friends, like, like that. Right. And we needed that and like off the court, you know, I got his back through anything. Like, even now, like, we FaceTime after each. Like, it's crazy. Whenever they play, we text or we FaceTime. Whenever I play, he'll call me. You know, we we see each other. We got lunch together. We did, That's my guy, you know. And yeah. he, like you said, he's misunderstood, but he doesn't, he doesn't care to, like, explain to the people that don't matter who he really is. Mm-hmm. The people that know who he is, we exactly. know who he is. That's, I, that's I, what I, matters. I, I, and I respect that, man. I, and, and and the thing about it is, like, you know, with all the situations that he's been through, you know, getting getting booted, you know, from Milan, and and you know, whatever happened in Cesca, you know, you would go. I went through it with him, man, in, in the interview, and and man, he answered every question with not just like well spoken, but with class. Yeah. And and he he did it in his way. And man, I just looked at him. I was like, dude, you so misunderstood. It's crazy. I mean. The guy, the guy knows what he's doing. I love, I love me some Mike James, man. For sure, really for do. sure. He's, he's, a, he's a real one. He's a genuine person. You know, people that know him all know that. You know, fans see, you know, him on the court and they make judgments about him as a player or him as a person. And a lot of it is unfair. Some of it, you know, sometimes it's, it's fair. But there are certain things that you just, you know, make, keep your judgments to basketball and don't, make judgments on someone that you don't know personally. I don't, I, I don't know how y'all do it, man. I don't, with, with all this Instagram BS and, and Twitter and all this, the X, whatever you want to call it now. Yeah, I don't know how y'all do it, man. I, it was, it, it was easy for me not to walk down and, and, and look at the newspaper, you know, when, when I was playing, but now your phone's beeping all night long telling you how bad you are sometimes. Yeah, honestly, like, yeah, you play, you play two bad games and you're the worst player in the gym and you lost this guy $10,000 and, and then you play three ga- you play a good game and you're the, like, it's, I take it, it's, it's all conditional love. Social media exactly. is, con- is conditional. Exactly. Um, what, what keeps me uplifted is I've never had a bad interaction with, any fan in person. Right. I, I've, I've had, like, you know, when they're supporting their team, they give me the finger or... Yeah, of course. They, they call me, which is fine. I like that. But on the street, there, I, there's... I don't care, you know, the places where I'm not liked, whether it's Barcelona or Valencia, I take more photos than anyone else whenever I go to these places, whenever I go anywhere. And to me, that's what matters. Social media, people give their opinions. They're... BS opinions that don't matter, and but in person, I'm sure some of the people that have gave me bad opinions on social media have taken photos with me. So that's yeah. how I look at life. And 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 you know what? When you when like you know one day if you sign in Barcelona, you sign in Valencia, you sign whatever, they're all gonna love you again anyways. All those people that hated you gonna love you anyway. So it's yeah, just... that's that's how it goes. Listen, I I'm a big soccer fan, and I've seen I've seen Ronaldo, I've seen Figo, I've seen all these guys yeah. play for Barcelona. And then play for Madrid. And go to Madrid, yeah. So for me, if that can happen, it just proves that yeah, it's all conditional. People's one well, actually, I'm not gonna name his name, but this Valencia reporter, when I was playing in Manresa, he was calling me like the most charismatic, the most fun, the most entertaining basketball player in the ACB. He said Valencia has to sign him, blah blah blah. And then we played in Valencia, and like I was playing against his team, and I'm with Basconia. And then after the game, he tweeted something like, oh, he doesn't respect his opponents. He doesn't, I never want him here, blah, blah, blah. And then some fan, like, recognized it. And, and you know, just this, a year and a half ago, he was tweeting all these beautiful things about me. So, right. you know, he, he knows who he is. If he sees this, he's going to be embarrassed again. But, like, 
he, be, just, he, be, he better be watching it. He, yeah, he better. Be. I know he will be because all these guys tweet about me, and whenever I play a bad game, they want to tweet about me. He knows who he is, and it's just it just proves that people are conditional, and people's opinions on January fifteenth will not be their opinions on April fourteenth. And right, exactly. Whatever. And what's the deal with your name, man? Like Monet, like you had me scared. You had me scared shitless, man. All of a sudden, like we get this email from from <laughs> your league and IMG about you know make sure you say his name right. And I yeah. I, done, I I ain't done your game yet. And yeah. I'm like, and and then I looked it up on our as we had the pronunciation thing that y'all do at the beginning of the season. Yes. And there's a time, there's one point where you said Shima. You didn't say T, but you said Shima. No, 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 never, never would say it with an S. I'm gonna, no. I'm gonna send, I'm gonna send Fine, it to you. No, guarantee. The first, the, you did two, you did two versions of it. The first one sounded like Shima. No, 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 definitely not with an S. That's one that actually, that's one that bothers me with the S. But I would, I would never say that. I think my last name is the one that I give some leeway to, because in America they pronounce it Maneki. So Maneki, in, okay. In Davis, you know, in, in college I accepted that. Right. In Spain, they say in Spain they say it the best, Moneque. That's Moneque. like the, that's the most you know common. But 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 the, who'd you have the problem with, Euroleague or with? The, I thought it was with Spanish. It guys. was no no no. It was this. It was a Euroleague commentator. I I still don't know who it is. Oh, but we, I don't reckon, need, we, we don't need to put his name up. I don't want to get. I don't I don't I don't know his name, but I know his voice and. Yeah, everyone, you can watch my Zalgiris highlights, and I think that's the first time I tweeted it. You know, I had a career high game. And it still hurts me to like watch those highlights because every time I score, he's calling me Monica, and like I don't see how <laughs> I don't see how you call me Monica. There's no I, there's no A, you know. So you know, my family. I, I think that's also for my family. Like, just pronounce the names right, especially since I'm not a rookie. This is my sixth year playing professional basketball. Right. It doesn't take too long to do some research. Hey man, just, I'm, I'm in the states. I'm our Lucas over here in Spain. I'm our Locus, and in Lithuania, I'm our Lauskas. And you know what I tell everybody? I'm like, as, as long as you keep calling me, I don't care what you call, how see, you say it. I mean, I, res, I respect that. I respect that. No, mentality. but you're you're playing now, though. For you me, um, you know, for my family and for me, it, you know, saying the name right. You know, uh, actually, this is random, but. I think one of my biggest pet peeves is whenever someone's talking about someone else and they say, they say his name wrong and they say or whatever his name is. I just think that's disrespectful. Yeah, you know, res yeah. Res respect I, I did, the guy. I did the Valencia game the other day and 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 they get in my ear because um, Cassius Robertson was playing. And you know, when when the game's going fast, you know, like you know, it's, it's you know, J uh, James passes the Robinson Robinson to whatever. And they're like, hey, man, you're saying Robinson. It's Robertson. I'm like, man, I'm not saying Robinson. I'm, Robinson. I'm like, that's not like some crazy European name or Russian name that I can't pronounce. You mm -hmm. know, that's like that's like my home. That's like my homeboy, you know, Robertson. It's easy. <laughs> right. But if it just comes out sometimes and it sounds different, you know, but uh, yeah, it's hard, see, man. I, I'm not no, going to say it. But, but that's different, though. That's that's a mispronounced. That's just like a slip up of words between things that are similar. Like, right. Like Dushko will say, he will confuse Mike and Matt Costello. Mike, Matt, Mike, Matt. So that's that's right. different. But the guy genuinely did not do any research, and and then he did it in the he did it in another game after I tweeted about it a week or two weeks later, and it was like, okay, now you just it's just you're not trying. But it's I got I, I got the message, man. I went to I went up to Basconia scared. I like I, I got to do this right. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Hey, uh, you get when you get the mod to go, Mike, and and you guys had a, had a squad. I mean, you you got player MVP on uh, I think around twenty eight or something like that. Um, 13, 13 rebounds, whatever. You you guys go to a game five against um, uh, who did y'all play? Maccabi. Yeah, Maccabi. Yeah, exactly. Go game five, and you had a big role in that. Yeah. But it seemed like it seemed like you and Sasha didn't get. Y'all weren't on the same page at times. No, no, we weren't. Um, and that happens. I think every EuroLeague team has a player or two or three or four that doesn't get along. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it goes. And, and not just in, in basketball, but just in sports and life. Some people just don't get along with each other for whatever reason. 
I wasn't his type of player and, you know, I didn't play as much as I, I know I should have. But just also the system in Monaco is more for the guards and right. the guards control everything. And it just, yeah, it just, it just limited me as a player and it killed my confidence a little bit. And it made basketball not fun. I think that's the, the thing that made me the most sad, like, Basketball wasn't fun. I was making the most money I had in my career, but it was the second worst time of my career since I got cut, you know, my first year. Right. So I, I mean, just didn't want to feel that again. But it's hard, too, coming from a season like you had at Mandresa to go back, even after everything, and, and, and repeat that. Because, you know, once once you're there and you feel that you, you taste that sweetness of the dessert, man, it's like you don't want to put nothing else in your mouth. You, you know, you want everything to be good, but... Every year is a different year, man. That's, every that's year, what every, For sure, for sure, for sure. But just knowing who I am and like, I'm very realistic with these things. And I knew it when I played in Manresa that I was one of the best players in Europe. Simple. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I would be in the right situation, I would prove that like I am now. But also Europe, there's a lot of great players that aren't playing up to their potential for reasons out of their control and I, I always understand that and coming to Monaco like obviously the, the money was great but I looked at that team and I said if I if that if I go to this team and I can do what I know I can do we're winning it all and I was I still stand on that if I if I was let to be myself a little bit more we would have won we would have won everything last season and I, I truly believe that it was, it was tough getting to that final four and losing, wasn't it? Oh my goodness, that third quarter! That <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, that third quarter was yeah definitely my least favorite basketball memory ever. Right, ever. Man, I was it was I was sitting there going man, and I, and, and I love all the guys that, on that team. I was just like man, I'm you know, I can't cheer for anybody, but I always kind of cheer for the underdog, you know, no matter what. I love the underdog, and and it was like you know to see you guys up there, go to the Final Four to get there. I was like, man, it, this is... And I love the story, you know? You, you get the story of Monaco coming in the league. It was, it was all set up perfectly. That third quarter just went. I was like, oh, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, we move on from that. We move on from that. <laughs> Wait, um, let's move on. Let's move on. You find, you find... For now, anyways, you find a home in Victoria. I, you know I played there for three years. I told you of that course, the level we met. Of course. I, listen, I've, I've done my research on you probably five years ago. Like, I, I've seen your... Five yeah, years think, ago? Yeah. When I came to Europe, I said, I need to learn more about European basketball. I need to learn who's who. Hey, hey man, I, my, vid my videos were still in color. They, they were in <laughs> color. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did Wikipedia. I did Google. I did articles. I did... I appreciate I didn't, that, I didn't man. Do, I didn't do the, the VCRs or nothing like that. I don't worry <laughs> about it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I did my research for sure. And, yeah, your career is just what you've done, what you achieved is just amazing. And, yeah, your name just will stand the test of time in European basketball. So I appreciate that, man. Definitely, definitely got to give you your flowers for sure. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I, a lot of you guys, you know, I walk up to you, you, you all kind of look at me like that old man, like, where, who's this guy, you know? It's like, it's like you kind of immediately knew me. And, hey, your on, boy, man. I talked to your boy TJ on the sideline too, man. He was at the game. And, I was like, dude, you keep balling out like you're balling out. You're going to be here playing with them next year. He's like, that's the plan, <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, we don't know what the future holds. Right. Uh, but that's that's my absolute you, best friend in the whole world. Um, you, keep playing like, you keep playing like you're playing. You might have a little say in it. I mean, listen, I, for me, I'm happy with what he's doing in Paris. And if they keep playing like they're playing, they will right. be in, in EuroLeague. So, exactly. he, he, he won't leave that situation if that happens. But... You yeah, know, who, know, who I mean, knows I love, what I, I love Victoria, man. I, I mean, those three of my best years were, were, were there, man. The city's beautiful. The people, are, you know, but when you win, the people are amazing. When you lose, you know, it can, you know, you got to stay home a little bit more than you normally would anywhere <laughs> else, you know? I mean, okay, so for me, I, I stay home a lot just because I'm focused this season. I'm like, I'm locked in, and that's how I like right. to be during the season. Um, but honestly... It's another I, in person like they love me here. Right. After after a the win, after dude, a loss, they love dude, me. Dude, the thing so. the things you do there, 
the things you do on the court uh, is kind of like what I did when I played. It was like, you know, you just embrace the fans, you embrace the the pageantry of it. They, you, you know, just I, I'm not, I'm gonna talk about that at the end, but I, I want to go over this. Like I went over all your stuff before this, and I looked at your numbers a little. Bit. I'm not much of a stats guy. I, I like you know, I'm more of the intangible type guy that the, the you know watches. You know, for example, the fact that you know you're in the top in rebounding is is kind of crazy, but I mean that's that's what that's what got you pretty much where you are. The, you know, some people say, well, you know, you need to shoot the three. You need to like, that's bold. Everybody can shoot the three if you go out and practice. No one goes out and does defensive drills, or no one goes out and throws the ball up with dummies all around and tries to get rebounds. You know what I mean? So when you get that point of your game done and people start noticing that, that's great. But I guess what I'm getting at, like, your stats are good, and they're really good. But the thing that amazed me the most is that I looked at them. You're number two in the league in rebounding, and you're, and you're behind your boy, Dada, which is, which is kind of crazy. So the curse is, I mean, it's crazy that he's up there. He averaged four rebounds his whole career. All of a sudden, he's up in first place in, in rebounding, which is nuts. Right. But, but if I look at, and I look at all the other offensive categories, and I and you know I'm just looking at the top five now. You're not in any other. You're not in any other top five category. But yet, you're number four in point index rating. I think that that's kind of says a lot about your game. To me, anyways, as an ex-player, as someone who like watches it, the fact that you're in the rebound and you're not in the top five in points, you're not in the top five in assists, you're not in the top five in, in, in three-point percentage or whatever, but you're number four. And, and number five is Toko Shangeli, which is my boy. I love me some Toko. Me and then And then in front of you, you got our boy, Mike James, Shane Larkin and Nikola Mirotic, dude, that's good right. company, my man. That's great company. Um, that's a, that, think, that's those guys didn't get cut from some Australian team. No, those they guys, did not. Those are <laughs> those are millionaires. They, those they, are millionaires. Yeah, they didn't go to Nebraska. They didn't go to Nebraska no. and play. <laughs> Listen, honestly, like I, yeah, it's still it's still kind of weird seeing my name there. Just because embrace I'm it, fine. my man. Embrace it, brother. Oh, I, I Enjoy am. Enjoy the because moment. I've visualized this for so long, and I've told myself and other people I'm one of the best players in Europe. Like I, I, I will stand on that. But it was, I just, you just get tired of telling everyone else that. Like I like being told by other people now that, yo, know, you're one of the best players in Europe, and mm -hmm. I, I've that it just it just confirms to me again that you know everything that I. And everything that I work for, it's just, it, it pays off. And with the rebounding thing, you know, there's a lot of people that are selfish when it comes to scoring points. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they think that the best way to impact the game is I got to score. I got to score. You'll see them on a 2-1-0. On a they got a teammate ahead of them, but they say, oh, no, I got to score this one. <laughs> I, I got no that, comment, man. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's, that's never been me. That's never been me. I came into the game. And I was, when I started playing, I was maybe 6'2 or 6'3. At 13 years old, I couldn't dribble, couldn't shoot. But my motor was just better than everyone else's. And I just had a knack to get rebounds. I could see it coming off the rim. The you, right that, that, that's, that's what you have. You have the sense of where the ball is going. It, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy because I, I kind of felt like I had the same thing. I couldn't get up. I couldn't jump. I mean, I could jump if I was on a run, but I couldn't jump off of two feet. But yeah. I always had a sense like when I saw that ball coming, I knew where it was gonna hit the rim, and I knew where it was going. And about eighty-five percent of the time, I was right. You know, sometimes yeah. you go one way and it goes the other way because you mis you misread it. For but sure. you have that you have that sense of where the ball is gonna land, and and a lot of rebounds you catch on the run. You know, you, you catch them like coming off the rim and you just grab them and go, which is really cool. I, I love watching it. It's 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 something. It's a knack that not too many people have. And my biggest thing is like. You go out and miss six shots, the coach is going to take you out of the game. But you go out and get six rebounds, you ain't coming out of that game. You better stay in that, you better stay in that game. You better exactly. stay in that game. Yeah, like, rebound is, is very underappreciated. And, yeah, you know, I pride myself on my rebounds and my, my efficiency. You know, scoring 20 points but taking 20 shots, to me, that does nothing. Yeah. And, you know, getting blocks, getting steals, you know, just being effective. Like, I, I pride myself on those things. And, you know, defensively, like, I also pride myself on that side of the ball. You know, I, I know I make mistakes. I know I, 
I like to take chances that, you know, other people wouldn't take. And I can get away with some things because I'm athletic, I'm explosive, and I can make certain plays. But I feel like I'm, I'm an underrated defender as well. And for, for me, that's, it's, it's both sides of the ball. And I always say this to people. If you're playing basketball, five on five, that's 10 people on the court. How many basketballs is there? That's, that's, there's one. That, that's it. that means nine people are off the ball. You better know where so it is. <laughs> are, you, are, are, you a good, are you a good player only when you, only when you have the ball in your hands? Yeah, exactly. That's probably going to be 5% of the time, 10% if you're a really good player. The other time, what are you doing? You're just waiting for the ball to get there. You're standing around on defense. For me, like, don't give me the ball. I'm going to find the ball off I'll the rim. I'll go get it. Yeah. I'll go get it. That's I how I've it. always been. They told me that years ago, man. There's 20,000 people in the stands. There's, there's 10 players, you know, 24 players all together. You got six coaches between the two teams. You got three referees, but there's only one damn orange rock on the bottom there. And you better know where it is at all times. <laughs> better know where it is. But when, when you don't have it, what are you doing? Are you effective? And to exactly. me, I, I know I am. And I pride myself, and I've always prided myself on that. You know, people, people look at my height, and they say, oh, he's rebounding like this here, but when he gets to this level, he won't do that. And I've heard that my whole career. Literally. And in, when I was in junior college, I was fourth in rebounding, like 12 a game in the, in the whole country. And they said it wouldn't translate to Division One. They wouldn't translate to professional. Right. It wouldn't translate from second division to first division. It wouldn't translate from Champions League to Euro League. Okay. Right. I, I, th I think it's just something that happens throughout life. Man, I'm 58, and people still tell me I can't do things. <laughs> so it's like, and I love it every minute. Like, every minute someone's like, well, you can't, you know, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. I'm like, all right. I said, we'll see. You just stop, motivated me. Stop, stop projecting your insecurities onto me. Just because you can't do that. <laughs> exactly. That's, take that's that right. one. You know, that's a good one. You can have it. Don't, don't stop bring that. Don't no, bring that negativity to me. Just because you can't do it doesn't mean you got to try and tell me I can't do it to make yourself feel better. I think that's what a lot of people on social media do. Oh, yeah, they, just, they project their insecurity. I can't, I they, can't stand it. You know, I can't stand social yeah. media. It's just, to me, it's all fake anyway. So I mean, Conditional, conditional I, love. I see these people with the selfies and the whole thing. Then you see them in person. It's like a whole different person. <laughs> Oh, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> no, 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 that's not good. I want to get into the fact that I came up to you before the game and I said, I need you to ball out for me tonight. And not only did you do it, y'all were down 17 against Panther the Night. Because not only did you do it, but you got to give some love to my boy Cody Miller McIntyre, who gave me like one of the best, one of my best like last minute comments, last second comments of the thing. I'm Amen. glad you brought that up. Oh my! I re I rewatched that. I'm like, oh, that was a great call. That was a, that was a great call. Oh, I, I, had, I had the time Man. down. And <laughs> yes, yes, we talked about that in the locker room. Actually, you, you know I who said, that? You know who I did that after? You know Gus Johnson in the states. Oh yeah, I, of course. Yeah, because Gus Johnson did one. I can't remember who it was in the NCAA tournament. Where he's like game clock off, you know, a shot clock off, game clock at five, and he just brought it right down to the thing. And my son and I, we always we always mess with it like that. So yeah, Fine. I was just like, yeah. I called him up yeah. right after. I'm like, dude, I nailed this one. I finally nailed one. And so so no. give give some love yeah. to my boy Cody for me, man. That, that definitely, was... definitely, I will, I will, I will, I will for sure. Let me ask you about the team real quick, man. Y'all are right now. This is the greatest thing about the Euro League, man. I love, I, I just absolutely love it. Y'all are in tenth place right now. 11 and 10. I'm sure there's some games that you won you didn't expect to win. I'm sure there's some games you lost that you, you didn't need to lose. But that's what happens in the EuroLeague. Yeah. You're, tie, you're tied, you're in a, like a four way tie with, let me see, it's Olympiacos, Monaco, and Partizan. Yeah. I think you guys are all tied up. And, and like I said, that's the greatest thing about this competition. You're a three game win streak from being in the top six, yeah. and you're a two game lo losing streak from being in 15th or 16th. It's, I mean, every game matters, my man. That's 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 the mantra, and it's it's just there's no other competition that makes it like this. It's like crazy. this is it's stressful. It's stressful. <laughs> like I'm, I honestly, you you we were we were just fourth place. Like we were eight and right. five at one point. We were just fourth place. Yep. And you know that's why every genuinely every game matters, and there's certain wins that we we had that we worked for and it was like yo that that that'll come through for us and then there's some losses that 
it's like, man, hopefully that one doesn't come and bite us in the ass. Right. You know, come come April. Because with this playing situation, it makes it it makes it better for teams because there's what, like you said, eleven teams that really right. could make the playoffs. But it'll come down to the last day. We already know yeah. that. And we yeah, just want to yeah, be on the right side of everything, yeah. You hope it comes down to the last day. If not, that means you had a but you had a tough couple months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I, I wish y'all luck, man. I want I want to get up there and do some. I, I want to do a big playoff game up there. You know that's that that would that would be my goal. I who, feel who like is, it's it's in the cards. I feel like it is in the cards this season. Who's who's your boy on the team? I'm thinking it's Marcus, right? It's. I mean, I'm 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 cool with everyone. Obviously, of course, but yeah. Cody, Cody for sure is my guy. We just have the most in common, and I I knew him before. Okay. You know, you know, I'm I'm very close with Marcus too, but. You know, he has a wife and like we don't do things off the court right. like that because, you know, you know, he's getting he's about to have a kid and I'm alone. I'm single. So in terms of that aspect, it's, it's for sure. Cody, um, Nikos Rokovopoulos, Chris Chioza, um, Danny Diaz is someone I'm really close with. Right. You know, but the team is like we're all like we all get along and it's. It's it's a it's that, a nice, that's a good it's that's a, nice a good thing about this. playing up there, man. It's like it's like y'all have to become family because yeah. it's so it's so tight knit up there, and you know you 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 have to be within yourselves. It's really it's really cool, man. And, and for sure, and I, I I love the team. I've loved the club. I've always you know everybody's like, oh, you played in Madrid. You won Champions in Madrid. You're you you know you you love me. I'm like, man, I just I love everybody who I played for. <laughs> you know that. Was, that was the main thing. It was just like, just get me on a team and, and, and let me enjoy myself. I, we're just about to take this yearly test. I'm going to finish up. I'm going to get to this part real quick. And this is, I, I know, I know, it's, the test is always, a, it, it, mm-hmm. it's interesting. But I think you're going to do good, man. I think you're going to do we'll good. If you, did all, we'll if you did all the research you said you did. Ah. Look at this, this is my thing. This is what I want to finish with before the test is, I, I've watched you play, all right? I've been talking to you this this time. I saw you at the game. I've seen other interviews with you, uh, you know, either sit-down interviews or post-game interviews, whatever it is. And I'm going to give you my opinion, if you don't mind. I'm listening. All right? I've been around this game. I've been around this, 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 this world here for a long time. So I think my experience counts in this. And I think the best thing about you, in my opinion, okay, the best thing about you is also sometimes something that might hold you back just a little bit out here. And that's the fact that you just look like you're having too much goddamn fun playing this game, man. You just you just look like it's like you you look like you enjoy yourself so much that you don't take it serious sometimes. And I know you do because I've talked to you and I've and I've seen your game and 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 there's, I mean, there's nothing that would ever make me think that you don't take this serious, especially after knowing everything you've been through. But that yeah. old school mentality, man, sometimes looks like they look at you like, is he really taking this serious? You know what I mean? But, dude, let Tima be Tima, my brother, because I love it. I love it. I think this game and the world needs more people like you on the court. They need that charisma, that personality. And and that's just my opinion, and, and and I can't say this really, but fuck old school mentality, man. Just keep doing what you're doing, and, and, and I love it. This is the best competition in the world, and, and you're bringing you're bringing something else to it. And I think that's that. You know, I'm a fan, dude. I'm, I'm, that's all I can say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a great compliment, and it's a very, it's a very like it's a very honest and truthful opinion, and I've heard it. Before and have you heard have you heard that from other people? For sure, for sure, I have. And I, yeah, but you can't I, change you can't change your personality for nobody. Listen, I've, I've I've heard it and I've been like, you know what? Are they right? And then right. I would have a game, and actually, it, it happened this season. Like there was a lot of talk about uh, this guy. He smiles too much, and he's interacting with the fans too much, and he's he's never serious. He's always, and then they said uh, if he was. Blah, 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 he would be better. And then the game against Fenerbahce at home, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to smile at all. And I was <laughs> terrible. We ended up winning, but I was horrible. Right. Like, I didn't, have, I didn't have fun. Like, I didn't... I wasn't a good teammate because I was, like, focused on not smiling and making sure that I didn't right. have fun. But then it, my brothers called me and said, you better not ever do that again. <laughs> like, we... 
They're in, they're in Australia waking up at 4 a.m., 6 a.m. to watch me be me and right, watch right. me be an extension of themselves. And they know me and they could tell something was wrong. And as soon as I said, yeah, man, I've, I've been hearing all this chatter. They said, man, F that. Like, you better not ever let them get to you ever again. Don't, man. So... Don't. Don't let people take you down from who you are, man. That's that's the okay. bottom line. And you know, you constantly smile on the court. Well, I mean, what, who whose business is it that you're smiling on the court? I mean, you're not doing it in a disrespectful way. You're just enjoying. I mean, you generally appreciate where you are, you where you are today, and the road that you had to take to get here. And, and 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 who and who can take who who who's got the right to try to take that smile off your face, bro? None of them. None that's of them. What, that's I'm a, I'm a I'm a walk in the game with a big sign like this. Let Tima be Tima. I will listen. <laughs> I will I will post that photo. I will retweet it. I will do all I need to do. But um, like, yeah, I, I don't I don't I hear I hear the chatter, but to me, it's just chatter because I look at life like this. Everyone can find and everyone finds something to be upset about these days. People yep. complain about everything. It's so if I was, man. It's people are negativity. so negative. People are so negative. Honestly, like it's it's very it scares me how negative people are because I think is your life that negative that you have to bring everything else to be negative and do you so look if I'm if I'm out here and I'm like okay well I'm about to be in the public eye for this game so let me. Go and not be Chima. Let me be, <laughs> let me fake it. Me and then people, it. people are still going to complain about something. And then I'm going to be upset at myself. Right. And I'm going to go home and be like, damn, that wasn't Chima. And people are still upset. I can live with myself when I'm, I, I'm, I'm myself. I know that people aren't going to, every, not everyone's going to like it. I know that. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, there's no, there's no way everybody's going to like it. I mean, I mean even, even if you were serious, people would be like, oh, he needs to smile more. <laughs> Come on, man. They say yeah. that they say they say that about one of my teammates, Vanya Marinkovic, and I'm just like, these are the same people that are saying that I I smile too much. So you right. people are people are hypocrites. <laughs> exactly. Like he, it's just it's just that's the world we live in. And people just people just sit back and enjoy enjoy the show. That's it. Watch right? the show. If you don't yeah. like it, don't watch us play. Yeah, that's it. that's what I always say. It's like I get people but like you know texting me all the time about the you know, this game and, and this commentary, this whatever. I'm like, dude, you got the right to turn the volume off. To turn it off. You know, turn the channel. Listen, <laughs> listen to some music while you watch the game. If you don't like that player, watch something else. Like all, listen, all these. Li listen all these to someone that doesn't say doesn't know how to say Monique. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, come on. There's so many solutions. You're just choosing to be in something that makes you upset for exactly. whatever reason. Like, let's, let's take a step back. You're upset at this guy because he smiles too much. Because he flexes when he gets an and one. Really? Of Dude, all the I, things that I, I could had, be doing. I had, the, I had the guns, man, when I was playing. I like it. If, 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 if I get an and one, it was bad to the fan. <laughs> come on. Come on. That's, that's I want, fun. I, I want to see one one day. I want to see one one day. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going I'm to I'm write it down and put it in my, in my head for sure. All right, my man. Test time. I, I don't know if they told you about it. They Euro League not. test. You got five questions. Each one is incremented by ten points. Number one's worth ten. Number two is worth twenty. Number three is yes. worth thirty. I yes. do this every time, and I never remember. Sure. I think one hundred and ten is our is our max, or something like that. I don't know. I, I've done so many of these, I can't remember who did it. But I, right. think, I think you're gonna get these. This one, I, I was gonna veto the question, but we'll put it out anyways. Number one, worth ten points. Euro League test time. Who was last season's EuroLeague MVP? Sasha Vizenko. I've seen, I've seen your interview with my boy Anthony Goods and, and Joe Dez. So we, we don't want to get into that, do we? Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> next question. I just give you the I just give you the 10 points and we'll move on from the next yeah, question. Next question, man. Which former teammate of yours has played also in Basconia? I'm sure I have a couple, but Mike James. There you go. There you go. That's 30 points, man. I'm telling you, I think it's gonna be easy for you. That's don't get fighting. too comfortable. Don't get too comfortable, though. All right, now I'm nervous. Number three, 30 points. Who's the three-point scoring leader this season as of today, with number of three-pointers made per game? Marcus Howard. Man, you running through this, man. 60 points right off the bat. That's light. He's 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 first with 3.6 three-pointers. Second is Siobhan Shields with 3.2. And third is Scotty Wilbekin with 2.9. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, Siobhan, that's tough. I know. I would. I don't think I would have got that one either. I would not have got that. No. Um, number four with 40 points. You're at 60, so this is for 100. I I don't have 150 yet. Yeah, come on. How many coaches have been fired this season so far in the Euro League? This before the season? Okay, this season. Because before the season. Okay, so we got. No, no, no. It's during season. During the season. Yeah. It's been. Ah, so it's, it's gonna be one. It's. Four. If it's during the season, it's four. Ah, is it five? It's four or five, and I'm sticking with four because it's during the season. I'm sticking with four. Don't scare me, man. It's six. So it's five. Because dude just got fired. Exactly. It's, it's six. Oh. It's six all together. It's, it's your boy, Dusko. Joan, you've been through two of them. Asvel did two people. Uh, Itulis. Zalgiris Fenets. Oh. TJ, TJ Parker, Poseco from Asvel, just recently got fired. Oh. And and from Zalgiris, Max Vidas. Oh. Damn, oh, man, I, I, thought, I, I, I really thought you were going to get that one. Oh, my God, I cannot so I think that. I think you got a chance to tie for the all-time lead with that's 100 and, 110 pathetic. points. No, Number five, no. worth 50 points to get you to 110. Tell me the exact score of last year's game five between Monaco and Maccabi. Uh, no, I'm not gonna get this. But <laughs> no way. <laughs> it was. When I did it, it was. Uh, I'm not gonna get this. It was, oh God, I can't even, that's a great question, I'm stumped. It was, it was 86 to 81. Man. Oh my God, I'm horrible. You got, the, you got the 86 part right. I got 86 right? Yeah, but you, but the other, but the, but the wrong way though. The, fi the final is 97-86 final. We had 97? In what? game five. Yep. Oh my goodness. That's what I, I got here. The guy you talk the guy the guy you talked to before the show is was, was, was my man Pablo. He's the one that does these questions, so. Yo, Pablo, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I he, I hey because because of the I didn't even know the dude got fired from Asbell yet. And when I saw it, I was like, damn, he's I don't think he's gonna get this one. Unless he's really on top of his game. Very disappointed. Come on, Asriel. What are you doing? <laughs> anyway, anyway. My man. Hey, uh, it's been an hour, about an hour and ten minutes, man. I took you a little bit longer than I than I, I should have. Probably a little longer than I expected to. But but uh, man, it's been, it's it's honestly just been my pleasure, man. To 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 have, as I said before, a player that that just I mean that you just you, you're so charismatic and, and and the way you go about the game. Personally, I love it. I got my let team be team assigned. I'm ready to roll anytime you want, man. You're my boy. Exactly, exactly. I want to see one. You. I want to see one one day you. in your league. But at the fans, though, you can't do it at a player, though. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it at home. I, I did it at one. When I played for Malik, I did it to one of my boys that I played with later from Baskonia. And he mm -hmm. had my name on a list in his apartment. Oh, and wow. I, was, okay, I yeah. was number eight on the list. He's like, no, I was coming after you if you didn't sign here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't want to be on no list. I don't no, 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 we got a list. Hey, man, like I said, man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know y'all are super busy. Got this, uh, man, last two weeks have been nuts. I even, right. I even got a little tired of basketball the last two weeks, man. And, uh, Crazy. and just, just best of luck to you, man. I love you. Peace out, brother. Thank love you so much, man. You, man. It's been a pleasure. I've been wanting to be on here for a while, and it's finally yeah, great to meet you. You know, a couple of weeks ago, and it was great to be here. But appreciate you. We'll see you soon. You do, you're the first person to say, man. I feel like I made it because I'm on the crossover. Like, come on, come man. On, I man. love that. I, I've, been, I've been watching it for years. Like, I'm. I'm this is. Honest. I'm honest. I'm honest. I'm honest. Appreciate, I, man. I, I knew I would be here though. So, thank yeah, you, man. that's what I like. That you knew you were gonna be here. Absolutely. It's all about personality, brother. Be good. Hey, good luck this season. I'll be seeing you up in Basconia. Uh, you know, I, I, follow, I, I followed you on Instagram. You followed me back, but I... I, I, I did I, not see that, Joe. Come <laughs> on, man. Damn, you 
You know I'm popping now. <laughs>